please don't think I'm a movie critic. Please don't think I know what I'm talking about. I'm just giving my opinions. Oh look, she's doing another non-requested video. How fun. Okay guys, so welcome back to the channel or hello if you're new here. Yeah, I painted my wall so it's not the bright yellow anymore. I know you're gonna miss it a lot. Okay, so today is another non-requested video. Oh my god, she's so upsetting. She's literally so upsetting and like you hate me for it. Thank you. But today I'm going to be talking about something that I just have so much to talk about, especially now because I feel like it's kind of a hot topic right now. Not really the hot topic, but like it's fairly new and usually I do videos on stuff that's kind of old so I wanted to do something that's a little bit more relevant to right now. I'm going to talk about Dark Phoenix. Now if you don't know me, um, most people don't know this, I'm a huge X-Men fan. I have been. I grew up with the movies. Probably not grew up with the movies because, I mean I grew up with the movies but like I was a little bit, like a, I'm like a baby. The first X-Men movie I saw in theaters was X-Men First Class because I was a baby when the other ones were coming out. They are my favorite superhero movies that I grew up with. Like everyone's like Avengers and I'm like, no, like dog, like I'm with the X-Men, bro. But yes, Dark Phoenix came out. I watched it a few, I think the day after it premiered. I have a lot to say about it. This is a very like kind of controversial film. Not really controversial in the sense that it's talking about anything like political or anything, but controversial in the opinions on it. There is like such a gap in between how people take it. There is a lot of people that are like, don't look at the critics reviews. They're, they're just, you know, being mean like critics do. The movie's actually really great. There's some people that are like, this movie sucks ass. It's ruining the X-Men franchise, whatever. Some people are saying, oh, it's not the best X-Men movie, but um, it ended it well. And there's just a lot of different opinions on it. And I feel like I would like to give my opinions on it because it's just something that I have a lot to talk about. Also want to point out that I have not read the comics. So if you are here as a comic fan and you know way more about me than just to let you know I have not read the comics um please don't be angry at me I'm a movie goer I, I read books and I go to movies I don't read comic books I'm very sorry to disappoint let's get into it spoiler warning of course because I cannot talk about anything without spoiling it okay so as we know Dark Phoenix is kind of this redo to what happened in X-Men The Last Stand so Basically, if you have not seen all of the X-Men movies, you are going to be a little bit confused. So as we know, the film goes through the journey of the Dark Phoenix, so and so and so, we see Jean get, you know, almost die or die, come back, rise from the ashes, she becomes the Dark Phoenix. Similar to what we saw in X-Men The Last Stand when she comes back from the ashes, it touches into this, oh, this, what was it called? It was that space stuff i forgot what they called it like solar energy some sort of energy we'll just call it energy for now because i don't remember what they called it in the movie so say this like galaxy energy <laughs> this energy was what fuels the life of the earth or something like that and it also caused was the remnants of the destruction of this other planet this other species is coming back to take that energy to take over earth because they want they're they're tired of being overlooked and they're aliens and they want to be you know um the superior race great we go through jean and her whole story she finds out what happens to her um learns her history what professor x hid from her she lashes out and she's like fuck you guys she goes to magneto magneto's like okay like i'll help you whatever dog and then she does like all this destruction he's like no thank you anymore i don't want to help you no more like you're scary but she's like but you promised you would help me oh my god and then he turns her away she gets all pissed at that she goes into hiding she thinks she's this dangerous being and she needs to stop killing people after she killed raven because that was like a really big shocker and we'll get into that later about my opinions on that <laughs> and then she does that she goes to this girl which was uh, jessica chastain um i forget what her character name was it was like vuk or something but jessica chastain we're just gonna call her jessica chastain because i don't remember what her alien character was named um she goes to jessica chastain jessica chastain um convinces her and manipulates her and's like oh my god you need to show this power dog like you need to like show it to the world like you're so powerful you could be the you could control earth wind fire you know you're gonna be the airbender that you've always wanted to be if you embrace it he will possess the very power of a god. They team up and then Magneto finds out that Raven died. Him and Hank team up, which is like a team of two, which I don't really understand how they like thought that through. There were some other sidekicks, but like they really weren't that cool. But let's just say it's a team two between Hank and Magneto. They're like, let's go kill 
um, Jean. And I was like, bitch, you're kind of stupid, whatever. We'll get into that later again. <laughs> I'm just trying to go over the plot of the movie. Charles and, and the X-Men are like, fuck no, like we need to save her. Like we need to stop Magneto and his like team of two or whatever. And then they have a little fight. Magneto tries to kill Jean. Jean's like, no. Are you threatening me? That's right. That would be a bad idea. And then Charles finally gets to her. She makes him walk up the stairs, which like, honestly, like I thought that scene, like when he like hobbles up the stairs, like I just thought it was like, for me while watching, I was like, is this offensive to do? I don't really know. It looked a little bit questionable as like to, is this really right to have like a whole scene? And it was like a really long scene too of him like walking up the stairs like that and her forcing him to walk up. So I was like, is this a little bit offensive you know what i'm saying <laughs> and then he like sh she goes into his mind she sees the truth whatever truth he says <laughs> she sees the truth and she's like oh my god i need to get this power away from me and she's like vuk you want it jessica chastain you want the power i'll give you the power i got the power you know and then charles is like oh my fucking god like you should not do that because she's gonna take over earth dog like we're gonna all die you know and then scott's like <laughs> and then he stops it from happening and oh my god then the mutants get taken by the government which like where did they even come from they come and they're like oh my god like we need to get these little mutant mutts out of here so then they take the mutants they put them in buses we've seen this happen before in past x-men films and then the little aliens of jessica chastain's race come in and they're like oh i'm gonna get jean because they want jean because she has the leftover remnants of the power so right now the power is like split between jessica chastain and jean but jean also has her other power of just being like gene you know <laughs> and then they have the whole fight scene on the bus then okay whatever we're out of the bus and then jessica chastain and gene have this fight but then jessica chastain is like oh my god if you kill me you kill all of us are your powers too strong so if you like lash out on me like yo all the people you love are gonna die oh my god so then gene like goes up to the sky and then she like you know explodes or whatever and it's like it shows the phoenix f like firebird or whatever and that was really cool then that's what happens they're like r.i.p jean they renamed the school jean gray's school for gifted it honestly th that just i was like why did we change the name it has way less of a flow you know like xavier's school for gifted youngsters jean gray school for gifted youngsters like it just doesn't flow as well as xavier's you know xavier just sounds fancy like jean doesn't sound fancy i'm sorry Maybe if it was like, maybe if you pronounced her name differently, like Jean. Jean Grey's School for Gifted Youngsters. Maybe that would have added a little bit more twang. But that's basically the movie that happens, bada bing, bada boom. That's what happens, really. Cool. Flaws. I hated the dialogue. Throughout the film, the dialogue seems to just not connect with the audience like there's no really point in the film where the dialogue really touched me in any ways and i feel like for this last film there should have been someone that wrote it a little bit better i just feel like there was a lot of parts where i was just kind of like almost laughing at the dialogue just because it was it felt like almost a like a disney movie the dialogue like it seemed so lazily written and just childish like it didn't feel like an x-men film I don't know, it was kind of cheesy and kind of like a predictable in ways also. Um, similar to the dialogue in Apocalypse, but I feel like since in Apocalypse, you kind of knew that it wasn't going to be the end of X-Men. You're kind of like, okay, uh, like it's not good, but like, I guess we'll see what happens in Dark Phoenix. But I feel like in Dark Phoenix, just the dialogue and the emotional scenes really weren't connecting with me as an viewer my favorite ones were eric and charles last scene i i liked their last scene together when they play chess oh my god <sighs> i liked hank and charles scenes too they were they were they weren't bad um ones that i did not like the first scene with charles and raven when they're in the office and they like just got back from the space mission and it's like really fun and they're like talking and i was like 
who the fuck wrote this? I was literally like, what is going on? This is not really happening because if you watch it, you know it's like Raven's all mad because basically the X-Men are putting their lives online and Charles is risking their lives, you know, to gain the superhero title and to make peace with the humans and so they don't fear them as much. So he's trying to push the boundaries and um, push them to their limits to kind of gain this uh, praise from humans. And she's like talking and she's talking and she's upset. And I was like, okay, I get it. She's, you know, making her point. And then she's like, she says this line and she's like, funny as how the name's X-Men when all the women are doing the saving most of the time. And I was like, what the fuck? And the guy next to me in the theater was like, what kind of bullshit is this? And I was like, okay, I'm a feminist. We want, you know, equality. But whoever wrote that line was on crack. They were literally on crack because I'm like, literally the title of X-Men, it doesn't have anything to do with your gender. The X stands for extra human. Oh my God. It it has so many different meanings, X-Men, and the gender is not a part of it. Like, Mama! It seemed like whoever wrote it had no knowledge on X-Men or like the X-Men universe and was just like a white feminist that was just like, this should be a line. And it wasn't funny. It, it was awful. It was like unbearable. Like she said it and I was like, this is not actually happening. Like why, that, that didn't just happen. Like. I just watched that happen. I just witnessed that happen. Like, why? I'm all for gender equality, but like, what the fuck does that have to do with X-Men? <laughs> Another dialogue scene that I did not like, like it really stood out to me that I didn't like it, was when the X-Men and Charles go up to Magneto and his little like team of anti-heroes or whatever. And Magneto's like, you're gonna let me kill her. I'm like, I have to kill her. And then Charles is like, no. And then they go into this scene and it turns into this like, it's supposed to be this heated argument. They're like supposed to be really upset. And then they start slipping in some like cursing to, you know, get the tension up a little bit, make it seem a little bit more real. And they use their one F-bomb in this <laughs> scene. And they decided to give it to Scott, which the actor that plays Scott, not so great on, on the delivery of it. Um, he was like, if you fucking touch her, I'm gonna rip your head off. I don't know what he said, but I remember when he said fucking, I was like, it almost sounded as if this actor has never said fuck in his entire life. Like it sounded so weird. Charles was like, you goddamn I don't forget what he says, but I remember he says like damn it or damn. He says something about damn. I think like Magneto says shit or something and then like Scott says fucking and I just was like I was like did the people who wrote this scene never have an argument in their life before? Cuz that's what it seemed like. I was like this is supposed to be this heated argument before they start fighting and they it sounded like a rehearsal. Like I didn't feel like they were like fighting or there was tension or they were about to have this climactic fight. Which like the fight scenes, I loved the fight scenes and I will get into that in a second. Like I think the fight scenes were really good, but the dialogue before it just didn't match up to it. It was like the fight scenes were up here here in the rage category and then like the dialogue was here and I was like they're just not matching with each other like I feel like the dialogue just felt so disconnected from the actual um, film and the plot line like this is the this is war this is serious this is like you know like we're mad we're upset and they're like if you fucking touch her, I swear to God. <laughs> I'm like, bro, are you really do you really swear to God? Do you really swear to God? Because I don't think you would do anything if he touched Jean. So now I'm going to talk about the plot line, sort of character arcs and stuff like that. So it's going to kind of be messy. I didn't do it in any specific order. So I'm just kind of going off of what my notes say and it's a little bit messy, but it's fine. The plot had a steady stream. I could see where it was going, but it wasn't too predictable. I liked kind of, you know, where it was, you know, it had some ups and downs. It, it, it was, it was interesting. I liked it. I liked the 
structure of the plot much more than I liked the structure of Apocalypse. I felt like it had a little bit more of a direction of where it was going rather than Apocalypse where it felt a little bit um, muddy in what was going on and kind of what was happening. I feel like Dark Phoenix had a little bit more, um, like I said, di direction and foundation to where the plot was going. Some nice little twist here and there kind of enjoyed that it was good in my opinion i'm gonna stick to that i, I think the the plot had a nice stream to where it was heading and i enjoyed it one thing that i didn't like was like i said earlier their take on emotional scenes i don't know why but i feel like all the emotional scenes just fell flat like i feel like i was watching it and i was like oh my god this is gonna be a really sad scene oh my god oh my god and it was just like like, I felt like I was watching Lemonade Mouth when Bridget Mendler's cat dies. Like, I just didn't feel anything while watching it. Like, I just, just... The biggest emotional part was Raven's death. And now Raven's death was a plot twist. When we watched the trailer, I was like, oh, the funeral, that's, you know, Professor X, because that's what happened in The Last Stand. So I feel like a lot of people that watched The Last Stand were kind of expecting to know everything that was gonna happen. So I liked it that they threw a little twist in there that it was Raven that died instead of Professor X. Um, but it kind of is similar to what happened in X-Men The Last Stand because in X-Men The Last Stand, no it wasn't. It was X-Men The Last Stand or X-Men X2. I think it was X-Men The Last Stand. No, it was X-Men The Last Stand where Raven gets injected with the like mutant undo serum the undo mutant serum and she becomes human and she's not a mutant anymore so it, it kind of is similar as to where you mourn raven's character um but in this one she actually freaking dies dog and she dies fast like that was in the first like what 30 minutes she was out my eyes were a little moist but no tears were falling but her death was pretty shocking i was like bro Jean killed her ass. <laughs> Which is funny because the thing is that in X-Men The Last Stand, after Raven gets injected with it, Magneto's like, peace out. But in this movie, when Magneto finds out that Raven died, he's like, I will fucking kill for her. <laughs> and I was like, okay, bro, I get it. You're upset. You're upset. I get it. Um, Villains. Villains was a big part that kind of was underwhelming for me, I think. Because in the beginning, when they introduced these alien species or whatever, as you know, Jessica Chastain and her race of aliens, um, when they come out from the forest, when Jessica Chastain in her like normal human body, like goes out to the wood to find her dog or whatever, these alien creatures come out and it looks so scary and it looks really dark and kind of, you know, terrifying <laughs> when they come out of the woods. And I was like, oh, whoa, what the fuck? I was like, oh my God, those, what the fuck? And then when we see it throughout the film, they're all disguised as humans. And I was like, that takes down that like almost threatening, intimidating aspect you want for a villain. I didn't mind Jessica Chastain. No, I did mind. <laughs> I think her lines really fell flat once again. Like the dialogue is like a really big part of a film. And like the dialogue kind of kept failing again and again in this movie. So for her lines as a villain, like I knew what she was gonna say. It was not strong enough to be villain dialogue. And it just, I felt like I was watching like Sky High. And don't get me wrong, I freaking love Sky High, but like Dark Phoenix should not have Sky High level dialogue. <laughs> it should not. The villain just didn't have enough intimidation. I felt like it needed to be bigger. It needed to be more powerful, not bigger in size or whatever, just bigger in their, you know, in their role. And then again, when I say that, I kind of can see why they did that because they also wanted to make Jean sort of seem threatening. Because in The Last Stand, Jean was the villain and that was really powerful and that was really strong in itself. So I feel like they were trying to make Jean very powerful in this as well. It just wasn't. Because in The Last Stand, Jean is freaking like seducing people. She like kills Scott, no big deal. It's like very big villain role. And I feel like in this movie, like I didn't feel that from Jessica Chastain 
or Sophie Turner as like the villain. But they're trying to make Jean seem kind of like the villain, but they're kind of not because they also want you to sympathize with her because, you know, she's still Jean and I understand that. And they're also like trying to give like Jessica Chastain and these alien races villain role, but they're not trying to make it too big to overshadow Jean until the right moment. So it's kind of like, oh my god, like where is the intimidation? Where is the threatening aspect? What is actually going to make me scared for these characters? You know, a big part of, you know, Jessica Chastain's villain is when we see her absorbing power, absorbing energy. We see her absorb um, Scott's laser beam, Cyclops laser beams out of his eyes and, you know, send it right back to him. And okay, cool. They did it better in first class. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you've seen X-Men first class, you know they did it better in X-Men first class with Sebastian. Like, in that whole scene where they're shooting at him and he just goes like this. That was cool. When he takes Alex cosmic energy wraps it up and then just like pushes it into the what's his name oh my god the adapt to survive i adapt to survive guy and he was like adapt to this bitch and he just like pushes the energy into him and he like fucking explodes like a volcano i was like that's cool when he pushes the power back onto them he uses the power against them basically i'm not really uses the power against them but he can absorb energy and use it back on it so when i saw jessica chastain do that in the movie with cyclops i was like already seen it already been there done that and like, I've already seen it, but in this universe, in this timeline, you've also fucking seen it. <laughs> Are you trying to be cool? Like, what's going on? Because it's, it was like, oh my god, she used his power against him. But I'm like, fucking already done. Already seen it. Fuck you. <laughs> I actually have a comment about, I have, I have a comment. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the scene between Magneto and Jean. Jean tries to kill him because he's like, I'm gonna kill Jean. And I'm like, yeah, sure. But if we think about the X-Men's, the only ones that would have even enough power to do it would be either Magneto or Charles because they're kind of like, you know, the baddest bitches around. Still, I was kind of like, yeah, sure, Magneto, you're gonna, you're gonna kill Jean. <laughs> Very funny. But he tries, he really tries his best. <laughs> she lifts him up and she crushes his helmet. I don't know if this was done on purpose, I don't know if there was a reason for this, but when I was watching it, immediately I thought of the flashbacks to him as a child when he does that to the soldiers that um, were holding his mother after she got killed or before she got killed. They're basically holding his mother. After his mom dies, he goes, you know, he shows his power, they, they unleash, and he crushes the helmets of the soldiers. So when Jean crushes his helmet, his Magneto helmet, to block his mind from Charles's, I was like, is that a reference to that? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that because I don't know if that is a reference. I don't know if that's a little like callback to what happened in the past. It might be, it might not be. I don't know if it was on purpose. I don't know if it wasn't, but whatever it was, it, I was like, <laughs> Fight scene. Let's talk about fight scenes. We touched upon the plot a little bit more, but I really want to talk about the fight scenes because it was actually one of the parts I enjoyed the most about the film. Because, um, like I said earlier, I feel like um, in these more recent X-Men films, the fight scenes have kind of been lacking in, you know, their potential because I feel like X-Men kind of has had really good fight scenes in the past, or maybe that's just my memory of it. I haven't really watched the first three in a, in a bit. Haven't watched them in a bit, but from what I remember, I think they were pretty good and pretty cool. Um, that's probably one of the things I loved the most about X-Men was their fight scenes and their wars that they had. I loved the Beast fight scenes. I, I Those were one of my like favorite parts about all of the X-Men's is when Beast would have his fight scenes because even though he was Beast, there was always some sort of technical thing that he did to it when he outsmarted his opponent and I just, I fucking loved it. This one, do you know how I felt about Hank scenes. Um, I loved Magneto in this film. I loved when he fought, they kind of pushed their boundaries a little bit more. I feel like in the more recent ones, we've kind of been uh, not talking about X Men First Class, we're talking about like Days of Future Past and uh, Apocalypse. Apocalypse, especially, I feel like their fight scenes just like, oh, like I was expecting more. But in this movie, I felt like they kind of pulled through a little bit with the fight scenes. I enjoyed them a lot. I liked seeing Charles actually in a fight scene because in the beginning of the movie 
it talks about how Charles is never doing the one sacrifice and he's never risking anything for the X-Men even though this is his team that he created he's not risking anything he's not going out on the battlefield he doesn't know what it's like to fight or he hasn't been on fight team in a while you know um but I love seeing him in action again um just like in the middle of it just being like you know like through the whole entire thing and I loved that I loved finally seeing Charles in a fight scene again because I haven't seen it in a while you you know Storm okay <sighs> little you know newbie Storm isn't she's not Halle Berry you know she's she never you're just never gonna be Halle Berry the fight scenes she was given in this was that were actually pretty good last time they put Storm with a in the last day, I think they put her with the what was it? Someone who could teleport, I think. In the last day, it was someone who could teleport. This one, it was a knife guy, and I was like, that character. Out of all X Men, you could have picked to be on Magneto's team. You picked the motherfucker that had blades at the end of his braids. Really? That's the one you've got. I was like, what the fuck? It's tragic. <laughs> that that's the one you picked because I was like, okay, like he's kind of, he's kind of cool, but like as like a little feature, you know, I wish <sighs> this was their final movie. In Apocalypse and Days of Future Past, we get references of Quicksilver being Magneto's son, okay? Like we all know it, we all know it. And in the end of Apocalypse, they kind of talk about it again. And I was like, okay, so in Dark Phoenix, we're going to talk about it again. Not one mention of it. Not one mention of it. It didn't have to be this huge, like, father-son talk. And I, and I wasn't expecting that from the movie because that's not what it's about. But wouldn't it have been so cool if Quicksilver overheard or saw Hank going to team up with Magneto and was like, hey, can I come along? And he wasn't explained why, but he was like, no, like, I really want to come along. I want to, like, I want to see Magneto, you know? And like he just wouldn't explain why like that would have been cool i would have enjoyed that i would have enjoyed seeing quicksilver on magneto's side to see him fighting with magneto to see kind of his true characters of his dad and what he's kind of like to see him in battle or to see um how his kind of strategies work and you know his motives i would have liked to see quicksilver see that i think that would have added in a little bit more of a another layer to the story and, and an interesting layer at that to the story instead of you know this knife guy who doesn't really have that cool of powers and it's just kind of like he's all right like i would have been okay with him seeing as little like feature once but like he had a lot of screen time and that really wasn't necessary. But it would have been cool to see Quicksilver switch sides like Hank did. Because I liked seeing Hank switch sides. I think it was cool and it added a cool dynamic. So I wish they would have bumped that up again by taking Quicksilver and making him switch sides too. I, like I said, love the fighting scenes. I loved, loved, fucking loved when Magneto kills the last of the alien species. That was fucking amazing. He like, he fucking just... That whole scene of him finally, like, you know, ending those, like, little, like, minions or whatever. It was, like, again, 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 again. It was, like, overkill, but it was so amazing, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I love seeing Magneto fight. I actually really like Michael Fassbender as Magneto. Obviously, I love Ian McKellen, too. The best parts of the movie, for me, had to be things that, you know, kind of touched on past X-Men's, um that were, it was kind of referencing to past X-Men and I really liked that as like someone who really enjoys the whole X-Men film franchise or it's just been following for a really long time and has that nostalgic place in my heart for it. I really liked that. So if you didn't watch all the X-Men films, like it's really gonna not be as satisfying to you. But for me, I was kind of like, oh, that was a little reference. Oh, that was a little reference. I liked it. I liked the plot line. I liked that it had some foundation and the structure more than Apocalypse did. Um, the dialogue wasn't really for me. I liked I liked the visual effects and the fight scenes. Um, visual effects wasn't anything I was like, oh my god, but I did enjoy them. Um, I liked that they brought back in the ashes effect. It references to the last stand when she did that, um, when Jean did that in the last stand. But it also is, you know, it it references the Dark Phoenix. She comes out of the ashes. She also turns people into ashes. Very cool. Very fun. I don't even know if that's the reason for it, but that's how mind mind works. So 
it could not even have anything to do with that. And they just were like, oh, like people turning to ashes, that's really cool. I, I've already talked about a lot of the issues I had. Another one, talking about emotional parts. So I talked about how the emotional parts fell flat. I also think they added in weird parts to make it emotional when it really wasn't. Um, it, it, it was like those little like kills to make you feel like sympathy or something or to tug at some emotion. Um, on the train when they're fighting, Magneto has a little friend that can control minds or whatever. And she her she gets yeeted off the bus. She's just like standing by the fucking like door and he like looks at her and then she just gets yeeted off. Like someone takes her and they yeet her off the train. And he was like, Oh like my friend. And that's supposed to like symbolize, you know, another person he cares about dying because everyone he loves like bites the dust. I was too shocked by how they killed her that it just didn't I just didn't care. I was like, what did you just do? Like, you you fucking yeeted her by her head out of the train. And that's how she died. In the movie, okay, so talking about Nightcrawler, when Nightcrawler goes, <laughs> Nightcrawler, they're on the bus. The mutants are on the bus getting taken away to this government, you know, prison, whatever. Um, and one of the guards was like, he turned to Nightcrawler and he was like, my kids used to like you. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I get it. The guards are supposed to be mean to them because you know they hate them or whatever but it seemed so out of place and then they try to make it like fit into the movie where the the guard dies and like nightcrawler tries to save him but i was like why like why was that necessary like and it, it it's supposed to spark your emotion it's supposed to you know get you there but i was like another problem for me was Earlier, like I said about Quicksilver, Quicksilver not being in the majority of the movie, I did not like because I love Quicksilver and I love Evan Peters as Quicksilver. And I feel like they tried, they tried to do his scenes again, like they did in Apocalypse or Days of Future Past, and it just did not work. Um, they were too short. And it didn't have the music, and it just wasn't as epic. Like, I feel like the director just, like, didn't do it, you know? Like, when we first saw Quicksilver in Days of Future Past, you know, he's, like, running to time in a bottle. It was epic. It was fantastic. It was, like... Wow. Like, this is just cool. And, like, the amount of, like, time and effort that went into that scene with CGI and, you know, post-production, like, it was just incredible. And I had such a great appreciation for that scene. And it's still, to my, to this day, one of my favorite scenes that I've watched in a movie, just because I feel like it's so visually pleasing when you're watching it. You're like, how do they even do it? You're, like, watching, you're like, what the fuck? How do they even do that? And then, in Apocalypse, when they do it again, it was like, yes, like, they brought it back. They brought back the slow motion, you know, Quicksilver scenes. It was just so cool. They did Sweet Dreams, and it was just really cool and really great. And I thought they were going to do that again, but the one or two Quicksilver scenes that we got were supposed to be kind of epic. It really just wasn't. The first one was on the spaceship, and the second one was at Gene, uh, where Gene, like, permanently injures him, and he does not come back for the rest of the film, which was so annoying to me as being as like Quicksilver is like a really cool character and you could have done a lot with him but you're too fucking lazy to give him the epic scenes he deserves and instead you're giving me great nice guy oh wow so fun but not fun at all because he's fucking lame <laughs> I feel like this video is just me like ripping apart Dark Phoenix but at the end of the day, I will go see it again. I will add it to my collection of X-Men DVDs. Like, I'm gonna buy it on DVD. I'm gonna enjoy it because I just am a big X-Men fan. But by saying that, I don't mean I'm like a die-hard X-Men fan and I know every single thing about it. Like, this is not glee. I'm not, I don't know everything about it, okay? If you wanna see me as a die-hard fan, like, talk to me about glee, I can, you can quiz me on it. But X-Men, it's a, it's a way bigger thing to like, be a fan of and <laughs> I don't know every little detail about it but I do love talking about X-Men and I will talk to anybody that wants to talk to me about X-Men but just know I'm you know a little bit a little bit stupid on some things so if you're watching this and you're like a huge X-Men fan and you know every little thing about it and you're just getting frustrated by what I'm saying I'm really sorry and you're probably like you're not even a big X-Men fan you know no XYZ da, 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 da. I just don't want people to be mad at me because I know 
obviously there's gonna be people that know more about X-Men than me. I'm, I'm not the biggest X-Men fan, I'm just a big X-Men fan and I, I love it a lot and I do have a bias towards it since it is something that I grew up with. I don't want, you know, the dude bros to come after me. We're basically talking about Dark Phoenix as a film. We're not trying to talk about, you know, every little X-Men thing in the world. And Dark Phoenix as a film, I don't think it's that bad. Comparing it to, you know, Last Stand, like a lot of people hated Last Stand. I personally didn't hate Last Stand that much. Um, but I can see why people don't like it as a film, and I can also see that for Dark Phoenix. Like, I personally like Dark Phoenix, but I can see why people wouldn't. So I feel like if you go into it, you're kind of- there's a lot of parts where they're, they're unnecessary, and they're they're almost comical, and they don't really fe fit the theme of this movie. This movie is like the ending film, and I feel like there were some scenes that were just missing the mark on the context. Yeah, I can understand why people wouldn't like it, I can understand why people would have you know, issues with a lot of different things. I had issues with a lot of different things. Um, there was a lot of parts where I didn't like it. There was a lot of parts that I liked it. So we're not going to Dark Phoenix to see some Oscar winning film. We're going to see it because we want to see, you know, Charles and Eric have some tension and, you know, fight. Where we're going to see it because we want to see Sophie Turner be Jean. You know, we're going to see it so we can see Nightcrawler do his whole thing and the visual effects on Nightcrawler when his, his, he did his teleportation, I was kind of like, oh shit, like that looks cool. Like this, the fog in it, oh my God, look, it looks so good. I was really like, oh my God, it looks so good. But like, we don't, we're not going to see it for peak cinema. We're going to see it for like this almost like child in us. Like we're going to see it for the badass fight scenes. We're going to see it so we can see our favorite characters do X, Y, Z. Like that's why we're going to see it. We're going to go see it because we want to see some Cherik tension. If you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. If you have differing opinions for mine, that's totally fine. Um, if you think I'm stupid, that's totally fine. Just don't be too mean in the comments because I'm sensitive. <laughs> just because I'm putting my opinions in a video form does not mean I think my opinions are better than yours. Everyone can have their own opinion. It's just X-Men. It's literally just a movie. It's not that big of a deal. You can dislike it. You can like it. You can think it's okay. It's all perfectly fine. The world is not ending if someone says they like or dislike a movie. So chill. I can already see you. I literally already see you typing away and getting angry at me for whatever I'm saying, whatever I might have said that pissed you the fuck off, but like deal with it. It's just an opinion. It, you, you don't need to get upset about it. Like you literally don't need to get upset about it. It's just Dark Phoenix, okay? I'm really bad at reviewing movies. I'm not a movie critic. Please don't think I'm a movie critic. Please don't think I know what I'm talking about. I'm just giving my opinions. I'm talking as if I would just talk to a friend right now and just kind of vomiting my thoughts about it. So like, I'm not a movie critic. I'm not professional at doing this, so don't think that I know how to, you know, properly articulate myself when I'm talking about films. I don't know what's the proper way to break down a film, what's the proper way to analyze a plot or whatever. I'm just talking to you guys like I would a friend about a movie that I just watched. So yeah, I hope you guys do the same in the comment section down below. I hope you guys give me your thoughts. I'm trying not to be too mean. Um, I don't know why. I get really scared when I talk about um big you know fandoms because i feel like they get really upset by things that are said so not just big fandoms but things that have a lot to them so something like dc or marvel i get a little scared to do something like um avenger movies because if you don't know everything about it people like get fucking angry about it and i'm like it's not that big of a deal but yeah, I was kind of nervous about doing this because I was like, oh, I'm not the most knowledgeable on everything X-Men, but I really do love the X-Men movie, so I really want to talk about it. But in the end, after I saw the movie, I knew I had to do a video on it because I just had so much to say. And once again, no one to talk to, so you guys are that person to talk to. I know, very lame, very sad. That's it for today, guys. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at tcollable. I'm always tweeting about things that I'm watching or reading, so go follow me on Twitter if you want to see what type of things I'm watching at the moment. Yes. Um, and subscribe so you can see more videos from me and turn on the notifications bell as well. Anyways, that is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!